right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini, and we are on episode 55. That's a big, not round number, but round number. Yeah. It's a, it's <laughs> so, a pretty number. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty number. number. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a crazy, you know, week and a half since our last episode. Our last, last episode was early. So this this was actually early, too, because we typically do it on Thursday. So this one's actually early, too. But it feels like it's yeah. been forever. So, yeah. Um, before we get into today's topic and everything, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all of the fun things. Yeah, hit the buttons wherever they are on your devices. Um, we've been getting a lot of really great comments and interaction from you guys, which is awesome. So we're gonna do we're we're gonna continue this whole habit of doing crazy questions at the end. So we'll just do a few of them depending on how much time we have and things like that, because we're getting a lot of a lot of fun feedback from those. So um, Today, we're really just going to talk about Olympia hype because we're getting to that point in time. There's one more weekend of qualifications left, and then the lists are set. Um, a lot of stuff happened in the last week, so we're going to go into all of that. Um, and then, uh, that, yeah, then we'll, then we'll do all that fun stuff. So other than that, you are almost in peak week. I am almost in peak week, yes. I am. Um... Checked in with Jamie yesterday. Um, I've had a very tough week. Um, so last week I was in Pittsburgh for, I don't know, five nights or six nights. And yeah. I just wasn't sleeping really well there. Everybody knows how I feel about Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, just literally wasn't sleeping there. It was, you know, North Americans weekend. And then we had to stay on Sunday for the pro show. And then on Monday we were sharing a room with other people. Not that anything or, or of those are issues, just it's, it's, it affects your sleep. So yeah, wasn't really getting some good sleep there. Um, we finally got home. I was so looking forward to sleeping in my bed. And then that night I had like awful night sweats like hmm. i have never had night sweats like this jamie joking was like well wait till you this is menopause like wait this is what oh. men menopause feels like i'm like cut my tubes now because like i'm not right going to do this. but um there's awful night sweats like literally like pouring sweat down my legs i went through i'm this is why i'm wearing like these shirts so much i kept bringing them out i went through like four of these shirts um so anyway I was up all night. Like you can't sleep like that. You know, no. obviously like I was even considering going in the cold plunge in the middle of the night and you all know how I feel about the cold plunge. So <laughs> yeah. like that's how yeah. high I was. Um, so this happened one night and I was like, wow, you know, that was weird. Like I wonder what's going on. My aura ring protected a, a ghost cycle. Okay. So this is all happening. But for the last couple of weeks, I've also been feeling like, and, and I've been saying like this whole prep, I felt so good. And then two weeks ago, I told you, like, I kind of just hit a wall and mm -hmm. I thought that there might be something going on with my thyroid, which makes sense. I mean, I was, you know, pushing those last three or four pounds and those are the hardest to get off. And I was just really, really tired. So I think there's something going on in terms of a go cycle plus my thyroid being down regulated. So this morning I went in for labs, practicing what I preach, you know, um, but we went through three nights of this, of these uh -huh. night sweats. And like I said, like you can't sleep, you're, uh -huh. you're soaking wet, you're cold. Um, you go in the shower, you still feel like you're sweating. I mean, it was awful, like awful. And now I'm just, now I have the anxiety at night mm. around it. Is it going to happen? Is it not? Gonna sleep. Yeah. Am I going to sleep? And am I not? Um, last two nights, it hasn't happened, but I didn't okay. sleep last night, but I haven't been taking sleep aids because and then I was also going through this, like, is something causing it? Right. Um, revive my nighttime supplements. They're going through like a re big rebrand right now. And I just got all my new supplements and the labels are different. Not mm -hmm. that the ingredients are different, just the labels look different. So I'm like, maybe there's like a different ingredient, you know, something that's not responding well. So like I'm off everything right now, just trying to sleep. Um, by the grace of God, last night, I didn't didn't sweat last night. I didn't really get a good quality night's sleep, but I checked in with Jamie yesterday. I was 118.2. Our goal was to get to 118. When I checked in yesterday, she's like, I, I want you just like a smidge tighter. Like it's not much. It's it's just a little bit. And that's what they said at the Road to the Olympiad as well. They're like, wow, you made great improvements. We just want to see your a smidge tighter. You know, don't overdo it just a bit. Um, so she told me if I uh, dropped under 118 to check in with her. And I mm -hmm. knew I was going to drop this morning because I trained legs two days before. So okay. checked in this, or um, I'm getting ready to go to my labs this morning, trying to get, you know, to my podcast at eight and yeah, all yeah, the yeah. things. And I step on the scale and I'm 117.2. So I dropped a pound last oh, night. Wow. So I'm like, all right, close off. Got to go check in. So yeah. I was checking to Jamie this morning and food's up a little bit, cardio's down a little bit. So at this point, I just hope my labs come back. Okay. I have a feeling the thyroid's going to be a little 
Wonky. which is fine. We'll, we'll figure that out when that comes. But um, it's been it's been a rough week, but also a great week. You know, we're right where we need to be. Um, we're coming into peak week. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I, I am happy. I'm excited. Obviously, I have this big anxiety around sleep right now, but hopefully that will, you know, every day that I continue to trust myself again in my body, that I'll start yeah. sleeping, especially as we, you know, come out of the SCO cycle. Well, and the sleeping thing affects the rest of your day too. You know, I said this yeah. happened with client that checked in yesterday. She's in prep and um, she's not sleeping. So she's weak. She's hungry. She's tired. All those things throughout the day. And I'm like, yeah, it's because you're not sleeping. I'm like the sleep, the sleep affects everything. It affects everything. everything. I thought for a couple of days there, I was going mentally insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just like, I felt weird. Um, yeah. The brain fog was real. And you know, life doesn't stop. You know, I still have clients that I need to show up for. And I have five girls on peak week this week and like, they deserve my best, you know? Right. So, yeah. um, you know, my, my energy intention always goes to my clients first and then me second, you know? So it's, it's, it's been a challenge, but I'm, I, from that one night of sleep I had two nights ago, I'm still riding that high. I feel so much better, but it's amazing. Like you said, like what just eight hours a good quality of sleep can do for you. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you, this is funny too, because I just sent this message out to my, uh, my girls today about consistency. You know, you're so consistent with everything that it's easy for you to kind of narrow it down. Like you're just saying that the supplements are different. Like, so like that could be what's doing it. And, you know, you're so consistent on everything. If that's not it, then it might be your ghost cycle coming through, you know, that kind of thing. The, the fact that you're so consistent with everything makes it easier for you to figure out where the problem is. You know, if, you, if you're not Absolutely. consistent about that stuff, then, then you have no clue. You have no clue what's making it happen. Right. And that's the, I know I, that's what I said to my girls this morning. I said, you know, the hard part as a coach is I can't make adjustments if I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like if I know what's going on, if we are consistent about everything, then it's easier for me to be like, okay, this is where the problem probably is right here in this area. But if we're not consistent about, about everything, we have no clue, no, no idea where to even start. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's a great point. You know, some people that, um, you know, clients that have digestional issues and then I go yeah. in there, my fitness pal, and they're eating different things every day yeah. that inherently isn't bad, but that certainly doesn't help me go, well, this might be it. Right. Right. Um, yeah. so yeah, if, like anything, you know, the more consistent that you are, you know, even me, I haven't bled in a really long time. I still track everything that I feel that I think is a hormone in an app. That way yep. I know when something like this happens or the scale increases, or I feel a little bit watery. I go back to my app and I'm like, Oh yeah, I was feeling these same symptoms, you know, on this time last month. Yeah. Um, so that it is, you know, consistency in this game of bodybuilding it is key so that you can know how your body is going to respond and when you know something's wrong. Yeah. Well, just in health in general too, like you're saying with the ghost cycle and stuff, I was supposed to get my period last week and it didn't come. So that's kind of, close. I know, I know, right? Let's go to Europe. Right. Yeah. So, right, yeah, so um, all right, you guys, we are almost two weeks out from my show, so I have my skin prep ready from Liquid Sunrays. They've sent me my kit. Um, you have your exfoliating body towel. This is going to make your skin nice and smooth, um, not too rough on the exfoliating. pH balancing body wash, which is super, super important. You wanna make sure that your skin is pH balanced so it's going to absorb your tan perfectly. This is your charcoal sugar scrub which is the bomb this is my favorite product that liquid sunrays has right here and something about this it just makes that tan really soak in deep and then last but not least we have our liquid sunrays body lotion which you're going to put on every single time you get out of the shower and that's just going to put your skin into really good condition when it goes to actually get sprayed for the tan so we're starting this today and uh, making my skin perfect for that tan as we get into the competition season yeah so um but i was feeling like more hungry, I was feeling more tired. You know, those are all symptoms that I get when I go into, like like the prep feels really hit me last week. When I got home from North, North Americans, it was like all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I'm tired. You know what I mean? Like I was just, I was exhausted. Um, and then I kind of worked through that a little bit. I'm still not like, I'm still not a hundred percent. You know what I mean? You're not going to be the last three weeks or so. You're just, you're just fatigued. That's what happens. Those last, that, those last few weeks is what happens. So yesterday, and I, and I just kind of resigned myself to the fact that I hadn't got my period that I wasn't going to get it. You know, I just was like, oh, I'm going to just lose it this time. For the first time ever, I'm going to lose my period. Last night, here she comes. <laughs> I was like, wonderful. Late. Um, so I think yesterday was day 37, if I remember correctly. Let me see. Okay. I have it logged. Yep. But so the good thing is you're still getting it, you know, and that's well, when you're this. But when I woke up this morning, it was gone. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, so, so I don't, <laughs> yeah, not even one day. Like, it's hilarious. We were watching the presidential debate last night. And when I went to the bathroom after the debate, I had my period. And then I was like, oh, okay. So it's just, it's just a week late, whatever. It's, a, you know, because normally I'm 28 to 29 days, 30 at the most. That was 37. So I was like, okay, this makes sense, whatever. And then this morning I got up and there was nothing. And I'm just like, there's still nothing right now. So I'm just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, guess I'm, I guess I'm done. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm done. It might, it might pop back in later on today. Who knows? You know, I'm prepared just in case. But like, I was like, oh, okay. Maybe not. Maybe that was all I needed this month, you know? So, gosh, you and your cycle around shows, man. It's like a oh, saga. Right? Yeah. Well, that was the whole thing. I was like, because if my, because I'm always on time, always. So, right. you know, I was saying this. I was like, um, to Jamie, I was like, this is perfect timing. Like, it's right in between every one of my shows. We'll be good to go. Like, even ovulation is not going to be a problem, blah, blah, blah. Then it's a week late. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Hey, no, at like, least you got seriously. some sort of bleed, you know, like that's a good sign. Well, that's what I said too. I was like, you know what? I was like, I've never fully lost it. Like I lost, I right. lost a period one time, I think back in like 2016 or something. And I was like, I was skinny, skinny, skinny. Like it was, it was bad. So, yeah. and even then it came back after like six weeks or something. So it wasn't even, it was not like I yep. fully lost it. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, so since then I haven't had an issue at all, and I'm you know I'm I'm turning 43 next week, so it's like I'm 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 in that time frame where you could see changes just naturally happening. You know what I mean? So uh, it's just it just is what it is. Even well, I don't that. wish this on you. <laughs> going into perimenopause. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I'm gonna start I appreciate that. Into that now. How I can. <laughs> get that part away <laughs> right i appreciate that because i figured out the sleeping part too like you know i've, I've just moved into the, the guest bedroom just is what it is it's just like because dan snores. i'm in mine right now <laughs> yeah yeah because dan snores i can't and i'm like I, I try i've tried it so many times and in the middle of the night he'll start snoring he wakes me up three four times a night i can't i'm like i, I was like dan i can't do this i was like i just, yeah. I just can't i was like i have to i have to get a full night's sleep so i've not had an issue with sleep at all other than like when i've been at shows so that's been good um that is we talked first. about this. You usually do that. Like when yeah. you're this close, yeah. you know, that you start yeah. to go to the guest room and, um, you know, Drew and I last night, obviously I haven't been sleeping. And then last night he couldn't sleep. So like, and I am so tied to him and how he's feeling, which I'm sure you are with Dan. So like, yep. I know Drew's like, oh, I'm tossing and turning because he's frustrated. And then I can't yeah. sleep because I feel bad for him and his yep. stress. So it does come to that point where, you know, I might have to go sleep in the guest room next yep. week when I'm, you know, prepping for Sasquatch. Um, that way I can ensure that it's quiet and it's still yes. and I'm peaceful and, and it's okay. Like that's just yeah. what you need because that sleep is so important. Absolutely. And there's, you know, it's, it's so funny to me because, um, you know, the, you, you look at the old school stuff where they used to have like their own beds and everything in the bedroom and everything. I'm like, why did, why did we ever get away from doing that? <laughs> Why do we? Why do we? Why do we have to sleep next? Week? Literally, we're not. We don't even know each other are there. Like, what's yeah. the difference? You know, like we yeah. like our routine every night is. Some nights I have cigars, some nights I don't. But like we we cuddle on the couch for like an hour and watch TV and stuff. And then I usually fall asleep, my head on Dan's lap while he's like rubbing my back. And then I wake up, I go to bed, he stays up. And then, then he goes to bed. So it's like, okay, right. so why are we getting all bent out of shape of, over the fact that like we're not next to each other in the bed? <laughs> like that's just stupid. You know what I mean? Like it's stupid. Well, yeah. yeah. And it's every couple is different, you know, and yeah. it's love languages and things like yep. that. Um, no, I, I agree. It's funny because I knew a couple growing up or parents, I should say, of friends growing up and their parents didn't sleep in the same room. And I judged yeah. hard, you know, because yeah. it's just like the societal norm of like, you're supposed to sleep in the same bed. Looking back in retrospect, they were two very high profile attorneys and they probably you just sleep. couldn't sleep, you know? Yeah. And um, I I was very judgmental when I was growing up. I was like, that's not right, you know? And, yeah. Um, that that's what they had to do, you know, and here we are as, as adults and here I'm doing the same thing with my husband on certain weeks, you know, so it's, well, there's it's, so it's many, not weird. There's just so many health stats and stuff too. Like there's, um, and I, I'm going to get the, st the stats wrong, but the, when they have daylight savings time, there are more heart attacks during that particular night than any other night of the year because everybody loses an hour of sleep and their <laughs> circadian rhythm is off. So there are more heart attacks that one day than there are any other day of the year because people's sleep schedules are off. 
It's I woke like, up to 300 messages in my trainer eyes this morning. And my heart literally skipped a beat. <laughs> like that's not the way to wake up or start a day, you know, but like, I can see that. Like yeah. you lose an hour of your day. Yeah. I was a busy, like, and it's just like, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so I, I believe it. I believe that a hundred percent. If I lost an hour in my day, I would lose my shit too. And I know, right? <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm a firm believer. Like I talk about this a lot too. We're, we're the no kids club. You know what I mean? I think that ha- the fact that we don't have kids, we get good sleep is a big, big deal on how healthy we are and the longevity and what we look like too. Like just, just in general, not even for competition prep, but just what we look like in general. You know, like I see women that are my age that I went to high school with and went to college with that look like they could be my mom just because of having kids and stressors of that so, that sort of thing. And I'm like, I have lots of life stra- stressors. Don't get me wrong. Like I have life, lots of life stressors. Everybody does. Everybody's got problems, all that kind of stuff. But I get my sleep. <laughs> I'm like, I'm yeah, sorry. Another, taking care of another human life or several yeah. is, is a whole nother battle. And yeah. that's why I give so much respect to moms in this yeah. sport. You know, like I, there's some days I don't know how I do it. And I don't have kids, you know, yeah. I got them, you know, and yeah. they're easy. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a battle and I can totally see how that would age yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, what's funny too. So I was listening to a podcast on the way home from North Americans. Um, and it was, uh, Matt Reif was on there. The comedian. Oh, the comedian. Yeah. yeah. He's awesome. Yep. So he was on tour. He was talking about he was on tour and with his schedule, like he would play the clubs at night and stay out and then like sleep during the day, get up like at five o'clock in the afternoon and go play the clubs again, again at night. And he wasn't sleeping at all, like he at all sleeping at all. And um, so he went to the doctors and the doctors told him he had to stop touring because his body literally had no, no sleep cycle in it. None. It didn't exist because it didn't know what it was supposed to be doing. Cause it never saw oh, daylight. I'd love to see that lab work. I know. Right. Oh, it never saw daylight. He never yeah. saw daylight. So yeah, because he never saw daylight, cortisol. yeah, because he never saw daylight, his body didn't know what time of day it was, didn't know what was going on. Your body doesn't work by a watch. It works by environmental factors. Yes. So he was literally told by a doctor he had to stop touring in order to get better. So that's, that's yeah. awesome. That's, I want to hear that podcast of you. Yeah, about it was, um, me. what was it? It was Bad Friends is what is the name of the podcast. I know. Bad Friends. Okay. And it, I know and he's he on was, like a lot of different yeah. ones right now. And I just enjoy him because he's pretty real, um, but he's also yeah. super funny. So I, I love that. I'm, I'm definitely that podcast is that. good. It's, um, it's two comedians out in LA. Gosh, I just, like, I just listened to it. It's, it just went up this last week too. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure it was called Bad Friends. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Bad um, Friends. Bad Friends. Of course, now I'm not going to be able to find it in my viewed. Oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> of course now it's not going to be here Where yeah, is it? you it did is. something oh, yeah. you're not going to be able to it's, um, it's bad friends is what it is um, okay, that, I'm texting that last it to one. you but you know why I'm doing it bad friends yeah. podcast mm-hmm. okay that's it that's me don't worry about it perfect, <laughs> perfect. yeah the last one I, there it is it was episode 233 okay oh let me write that one down too but so, you know I'm brain dead so <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the title of it is Bobby is dating Matt Reif's mom. That's the that's the title of the podcast. So for everyone that's watching our podcast, there you go. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what when I go on these drives and stuff like that, that's what I do. I listen to podcasts and things like that when I'm driving. So I actually listen to podcasts a lot when I'm when I'm training and things like that as well. So. It's it's thing. funny. It's like a vibe. It depends on how like what training vibe I'm in. I'm either mm-hmm. listening to like super hard EDM, mm-hmm. country, a podcast, oh, no. or I just have these on and it's dead silent. <laughs> it just depends. Yeah, on the see, mood. I don't ever listen to country. I will say no. I do yeah, not you're not a country, country girl. Yeah, yeah. we know. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, so I'm either listening to podcasts or I'm listening to like a music mix of some sort. And it's usually more like uh, like pop a kind of beat you know that keeps me a driving beat kind of thing a bop. um yeah and if i'm not listening to that then yes it's just quiet because like my i work out in the shed down back so i just listen to like the birds and stuff like that <laughs> so you know which right now the temperature and stuff outside is perfect for training because it's not super hot it's like you know low 70s that kind of thing so you don't get yeah you don't get like super hot in there anymore i don't have to have the fan on blasting and things like that i'm not like dripping and sweat it's perfect weather for training right now so yeah that sounds gorgeous I'm yeah jealous. it's fantastic it's fantastic so 
so yeah, so on the, on the prep front of that situation, I'm less than three weeks out, almost two weeks out as of this, as of this coming weekend, we'll be two weeks out. So, um, we're going to see Kevin Hart on Friday. So technically my start of my peak week will be the, will be Saturday, you know, or not peak week, I'm sorry, two, two weeks out will be Saturday. So talking about consistency aspect, that's when all of my sweeteners will go out. That's when all of any kind of powders or anything like that, I'm taking any kind of energy drinks, all the stuff is going to go out. So, so, so Kevin Hart's my last opportunity to have like an energy drink. Your <laughs> last hurrah. Yeah. yeah. Dan was like, cause we're going into DC and he's like, so can we like go get coffee or something? Cause we can't go to dinner. And I was like, I'm like, yeah, we can, we, we can find coffee. I'm sure. <laughs> like, I don't know what sure, I can, you do can find that. I'm like, I got to stick my food in my purse. And I think, so usually when you go to these comedy shows, I don't know about this one, but I'm assuming when you go to these shows, because they record most of them for like Netflix and things like that, especially here in DC, for some reason, when comedians come here to DC, they, they record their specials for Netflix. So like all of them are being recorded. So you can only bring in a small little purse and that's it. You can't bring anything else in. Um, they, they just, that's like the restriction. So I'm like, I can't fit my food in there. <laughs> can't, even, can't even fit a Ziploc bag of food in a bag. I know. Small. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So I'll figure something out. I'll you can't wear a booty shirt and then you just put it in the. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll figure something out. My thought is I'm like, I'll eat my, I'll eat a meal in the Uber on the way in. And then, um, and then I'll just wait until the show's over and when we get home or whatever, I'll eat my last meal when I get home or something. So it'll only be a few hours, you know? He just won an award. Did you see it? Did you guys watch that Netflix special? No, but I did see the Netflix special pop up, but I didn't watch it. No. Yeah, you guys okay. should watch it. It's like a couple hours, but it's, he he receives an award and he has like all the major comedians that go yeah. up and they have like four minutes and they roast them, but also congratulate him. Yeah, Jerry, yeah, yeah. Um, Jerry Seinfeld's on there. I saw um, his clip. I, yeah, I saw Jerry Seinfeld's clip, like a reel on Instagram. I it's did funny. see that. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. Yeah. It's really cool. You guys, yeah, we, we watched that, that the last two nights before bed. It was cool. Would you? So when you do cardio, do you watch TV or what do you do for cardio? I either read or if I have one of my shows to watch, then I'll watch a show. Um, but it, it just kind of depends on my mood. Okay. Most of the time reading um, really uh, passes the time for me. Okay. Um it's, it's weird. Like usually it's always a show, but this yeah. prep it's been, it's been going back and forth. I'm having, it's so funny. I was just talking about this with a dare. When you go from 40 minutes of cardio to 50 minutes of cardio, it's an extra 10 minutes, but it feels like two hours. Exactly. <laughs> I had the same conversation with a dare. I had the same exact conversation. <laughs> so when she increased it to 50 minutes, like four, four, or five, four or five weeks ago, like I was like watching the clock, like a hawk and every minute felt like, Yep. But when it's yep. 40 minutes, it like, it would like Agreed. pass by. Agreed. So literally at this point, anything just to make the clock go by, but it's usually one of those two. Okay. So I, I, once I get over 40 minutes, I split it. So I split it. Okay. 30. Like right now I'm at 60. We've talked about that. Okay. Yeah. Right now I'm at 60. So it's 30 and 30. So okay. um, yeah, I do shows. That's what I do. Cause most shows okay. are like half an hour or yep. they're an hour, one or the other. Yeah. yeah. So it's exactly. really easy to get your, your cardio in. And like the other part of it too, like I, I started watching, so I've watched like a ton of series already, but I started, started rewatching Suits because I, I watched like the first season Great years show. ago, but I haven't watched it in years. So I, I just pulled the season, the season one up yesterday. So Drew reminds me of Harvey. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. I told him he's got to watch the show. And it's like one yeah. of those people where everybody's watching a show and like, watch, he doesn't want to watch the show. So I think he keeps that, saying, like, yeah. Suits, you, you said Suits is good, right? Yeah. And we're getting ready it to is. go on this Europe trip. I'm like, go watch it on the plane. Like, that's a perfect plane. Yeah, show. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I like, I do. And when it comes to shows, for cardio, they have to have some sort of drive to them because otherwise I won't push myself. You know, that's a good one. Right. It, it has really good like drive to it. Um, there's, and every once in a while it's funny because like there will be like background music or something that pops up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to push myself harder during the background music, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's so funny because I watch Big Brother. I'm a huge Big Brother okay, fan. Okay. Like I've watched from like season eight years okay. ago. I think, I think we're on, on year 26 or something. Um, but they're, they're playing games and they always yeah. have good music. So I feel the same. Like that's a perfect show. Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm watching them compete and I'm yeah. you know, competing. So totally. Yeah. Whatever you're watching or listening to has to be a vibe. Now the reading thing, I don't know. I just like put that thing up to 4.3. I cover the, um, the, uh, the okay. time and I just 
go and read, you know, and that's I just like cognitive diversion I, I tr- at this point. I've never really tried. I've never really tried to read. So that could be part of it, but I've never really tried to read during cardio. It's always, it's always, you have a good book too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But so that's, that's, that's on my thing. What else have I I've watched? So the stuff that's good out that's out right now is um, chaos is another series. It's a good one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's um, Netflix. Okay. It's on Netflix. Yep. So this is uh that's with uh, Jeff Goldblum. And he oh, plays nice. he plays Zeus, so it's based on Greek mythology. Um, but it's like a modern twist and it's like really like colorful and vibrant and like very action filled and stuff like that too. So again, another good cardio watch. Yep. Um so season one just came out of that. So I just finished that last week. Um another one that I watched was um Brother's Son, which is um about like like Chinese uh, gangs, basically. So it's a whole like gang war thing. It's actually really cool. Again, shot very, very like high, fast energy type stuff. Um, really liked it a lot. Comedy to it as well. Drama to it. All that kind of stuff. Um, and then another one that I watched is a new one that came out with um, Nicole Kidman. Um, oh, I think Drew is watching. The Perfect that. Couple. Like, the Perfect Couple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That looked, that was. Yeah. That yeah, that's a good one too. I started watching that. Yeah. It's like a soap opera. And then Drew put it on and then I was like, what are you watching? Like it looked yeah. really good. Yeah, it's like a soap she's opera. She's stunning. Yeah. Yeah. It's she's she's doing a lot of stuff recently. I don't know what it, like she did, just did a movie with um, Zac Efron too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just, I watched that as well um, during cardio. <laughs> I don't ever watch TV except for cardio. And then like we watch like news or something to go to sleep to. So it's like, you know, that's it. That's all we watch. So, um, but yeah, I've seen a lot. I'm not thinking about it. Like I've seen a lot of these series. (laughs) Like these are all brand new ones that have come out recently that I watched. Yeah. I'll just put one out there. Um, Presumed Innocent. I think it's on Apple TV. It's really good. It's only one season right now, but they already have the second season coming out. Um, It's really, really good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, I like to hear what people are watching because I'll, I, it takes me a little bit to get into shows sometimes. And if it takes me more than one episode to get into a show, I can't do it. Like I feel the, the same. Like the Witcher is one that everybody loves. I can't, I've tried to start that one like five times and I can't do it. I'm like, I don't know why I can't get into it, but I can't get into it. There's just certain ones I'm like, no. You know, it's funny. I feel that way about Game of Thrones. I, yeah. I have tried to watch Game of Thrones three times and yeah. I always end on the same um episode season one it's like four or five in and people are like just keep going you just have and i'm like i can't i just can't, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I'm just like, yeah, if i can't get into it i can't get into it i can't you know and i, yeah. I like i said three times and drew and i have stopped on the same episode not intentionally every time because we just were like this is boring like you know but and i know oh. it's great you guys are all good fans of it and that's great in dne but i just i can't commit <laughs> one that i you I, I really like but this might be in the same kind of vein is the um vikings of valhalla that's on that's okay. on netflix too but there was also the vikings that was on the history channel so we watched all of those but they haven't um come back with a new season that was the they're just called vikings but then there's another series called vikings of valhalla that's on netflix as well we watched that one that was a couple years ago um but that's i see that one popping back up now i'm wondering i'm wondering if they're gonna have like a new series come out or something like that or new okay episode, new episodes or whatever you know that's a, that's one that i did i really get into the viking stuff i like that stuff a lot. i was gonna say there's a theme right yeah to what you yeah, watch. Yeah. yeah all right yeah. <laughs> very action packed <laughs> yeah so i like i like stuff that's relatively like could be real life but is amplified you know what i mean does that make sense yeah, absolutely so, yeah i don't i don't like like that, I think that's one of the reasons why I have a hard time with stuff like Harry Potter and like things like that, because it's just not real life. That wouldn't happen for real. Drew you know feels I mean? the same way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, a hard to could, relate when it's yeah. Not real. If it could be possible, you know, if it could be possible, then yes. Yeah. So and like, you know, going back to talking about the um, Greek mythology and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of like fantastical, like God stuff and things like that that goes on in there. But but that's really what people believed back in the day, you know, a lot of them still believe in Greek mythology and all that too. So like, that's real life, you know, it's not just made up like wizards and shit like that, you know, like I just can't. <laughs> just like Drew. Just like Drew. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, he calls like anything like that anime. And we're like, that's not okay. anime, it's fantasy. He's like, it's anime. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, no. No. Or like Star okay. Wars. I can't get into Star yes. Wars either. I can't get Same. into any of that stuff. I can't get into like any of the Marvel stuff. I can't get into any of that. None of it. I know. 
I, I just, I just can't. When people are talking about it, they're like, they're so excited and they're so passionate yeah. about it because you know yeah. it's like a movement. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm totally. like, no. I'm like, I was into cartoons as a kid. I'm like, I'm not into that stuff now. I'm like, see, I wasn't. Things. I wasn't I was. in a cartoons. Okay. I was. I was a cartoon. I was never in a cartoons. Yeah. Like Teenage Mutant mm-hmm. Ninja Turtles, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Was when I was when I was a kid, for sure. But not anymore. Now it's got. Now it's got to at least do somewhat feel like it could be real. <laughs> you watched it all when you were a kid. It's okay. I did. I did. So, anyway. Um, so with that, we've got the Olympia coming up. So. Oh really? I know, right? <laughs> So there's been some interesting developments. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about Seabomb first. Did you see his whole announcement? I did. I did see his announcement. How you, yep. How did you feel about that? How about how he how he hyped the whole thing up? Honestly, like when they were doing, you know, the teasers and things yeah. like that, I was like, this is probably not going to be as big as we think it is. I yeah. never, I never thought he was retiring. I think it's yeah. still too premature. I think he still has at least a, a few years in him. Um, so I didn't think it was going to be anything like, you know, shocking the world. Um, but when the actual announcement came out, you know, I'll be honest. The first thing I said was he's so smart, you know, yeah. he, he is, Drew and I were just talking about this and like the definition of success, right. In this sport. And, you know, obviously he's the most successful on stage, but what happens after that, you know, yeah. and he is truly setting himself up for life after the stage, you know, now he's a part owner and one of the largest supplement companies raw. Um, and that's like his family, you know, there, he's, th- th- that's a forever home for him. And now he's solidifying a part ownership in Gymshark, which is, you know, yeah. a top, a, a clothing company, you know, so just a very smart businessman. I'm, I, I was really impressed you know yeah. and, and obviously you know nobody ever knows all the details and things like that we're making judgments based off you know that the outside but as a fellow business owner and competitor like i i mad respect you know yeah yeah well, i thought it was funny because like you know he hyped it up so much everybody thought it was going to be one of two things they thought he was going to either retire or they thought he was going to go to the open and I'm in my in back of my head. I'm thinking, there's no way he's going into the open. He said before he has no desire to go into the open. You and know, he's been posting keep... too many photos. Yeah, like he, he yeah. Just doesn't look like he's going into the open. Well, and yeah. the, you know they've said it before. He's like he's said it before. He's like I don't do this. He's like I, he, he said this at Pittsburgh. Like he did a little speech at Pittsburgh Pro, and he said when I turned pro, he's like I thought that was going to be my retirement because there was no no place for me to go. He's like, for my, my size, my height, I don't want to get that big. You know, he's got health problems and stuff like that too. He's like, I don't want to push my body to that, to do this. He's like, if they didn't bring, you know, classic physique into the pro league, he's like, I would have retired once I got my pro card, you know? So I knew, I knew he wasn't doing the open, you know? And he's like, after last year's Olympia, you know, they asked him to, if he would ever do it for the, you know, cause the paycheck is so much bigger. And he's like, I don't do this for the paycheck. He's like, he's like I make way more money off stage than I do. He on. doesn't need it. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. that's stupid. That's a really dumb move. Like it's not, a, it's not worth the paycheck. Um, I thought if anything outside of the business world, it would be him saying that this is going to be his last year. His last year. Right. You know, right. like mean? a, like a, like an ode to, you know, the final weeks of yeah, prepping yeah, yeah. and absolutely. Yeah. 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 Which and I still think that possibility. I think it. it's coming. You know, I, I think too. it's coming. You know, I, 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 I definitely too. think it's coming as a dad. Now I know Courtney wants more kids, you know, and he w- looks and appears to be a great dad, you know, and, and loving that part of life. And mm-hmm. there's going to be a time where he's going to want to take a step back and, you know, especially as the kids get older, you know, yeah. baseball and practices and that, you know, so yeah. yeah, it's coming. It's for sure. Yeah. But I, uh, I thought he at least had, you know, a couple more in him. So we'll see, we'll see if this one's going to be his last one, maybe next year. I, I agree with you though. I think it's going to be coming around soon. And I don't think there was any way he's going to retire this year. I mean, at this point, because I, I know you were there at, at Meet the Olympians last year, but he had a line out the door at Meet the Olympians. He was the only. And he wasn't person. even at the table, and people right. were still waiting in line to take yes. a photo of his name plate. <laughs> yes, like he had a line out the door. He was the only person in there that had a line out the door. Like he wouldn't do that at five weeks out from the Olympia. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just wouldn't do that. You know, the only way he's pulling out from the Olympia at this point is if he has to for a health reason or whatever. You know, that's yeah. just the only reason. So I knew that that wasn't going to be the case, but I was like. I'm like this, this. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, props. You got everybody talking, and now everybody knows. Everybody knows that you that you made the business move and stuff like that too. You well, know that's what, what I mean? you also have to think of as like 
you know, gym shark, you know, yeah. now you're, you're bringing on this athlete and yeah, you're going to utilize them for PR, right? So 100%. the teasers now everybody's looking at, you know, what's he going to do? And they're keep going back to his feed, you know, waiting yeah. for this update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the announcement of gym shark comes and now what's everybody clicking on? Gym shark. Oh my right. gosh, gym shark, gym shark. Like, so mm -hmm. there are, just like with anything, you know, we don't realize it all the time, but there's PR moves and that was a PR mm -hmm. move. Yep. You, know, and you can hate on him all you want. Yeah. You can hit him all, all you, you want. You would do the he's same getting, thing. He's getting the clicks. He's getting the dollars. That's all he yeah. cares about right now. You would now, do you the know? same thing if yeah. you had a business or you were a sponsored athlete of company like that. That's You'd be right. like, okay, you want me to tease for seven days on my, uh, on my followers? Cool. I'll do it. Keep yep. giving me my paycheck. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's hilarious though. When I saw, I started seeing like all the comments on how people like this, this is stupid. This is bullshit. I can't believe you hyped all this up for no reason. And I don't know. There was a reason. It was this reason right here. Of course. <laughs> Listen, it's a business. Everything's a business at the end of the day, guys. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So on that note too, though, I think some people thought he was going to retire because somebody else dropped out of the Olympia, which is Jennifer Dory. So yeah. that was one that I'm, I saw coming but I didn't think it would happen like now. You know what I mean? Like I thought if she was going to pull out, I <clears> thought she would have done it a while ago versus doing it at five weeks out. You know what I mean? So um, <clears throat> two things I want to discuss with this is A, what do you think about her pulling out? And then B, what does this mean for the top five at the Olympia this year? So, you know, yeah. so what, what are your thoughts as far as um, when she pulled out, why she pulled out, all those kinds of things? What do you think? So to be honest, I don't want to say I was expecting that, but I was curious if she was competing this year. Yeah. Um, she was not like posting as much as she usually yeah. does and Agreed. showing herself or doing any kind of updates. And then there was just all kinds of speculations, right? So, you know, honestly, I, I don't know. You know, I, I hope everything's okay. You know, we yeah. don't really know why she's pulling out. She said it's for business reasons. So, you know, respect, you know, mad yeah. respect to her. You know, I, I always think about, which I'm never going to win an Olympia, but if I were to win an Olympia, would I, would I try again? You know, it's, yeah. it's easier to win the title. It's harder to get it back. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, do you, do you, do you, you know, do you uh, end on the high note? Right. So, um, I, uh, just hope everything's okay. You know, always wish her the best. I think she's amazing. I think she's the mo the best Miss Bikini Olympia we've had. You know, she's always showing up. She's always doing, you know, events. I think she represents the sport so, so well. So I only want who's crowned next to be able to hold that same standard Agreed. and title very <clears throat> well for our, for our division, you know? So, you know, which leads us into the top five, you know, yeah. it's going to, it's going to really shake up the top five, even the top 10. That's one yeah. body that's missing, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's one more opportunity for someone else to crack that top 10. And then obviously we're going to have a new winner this year. Yep. Um, so, you know, and those are just my thoughts. You know, I, I, I love all of the girls in this sport. I respect every single one of us that step on the stage. I just want the winner to be somebody that truly represents our category in the best way possible that shows up. And that's a really good Miss Bikini Olympia. You know, it's not about, to me, just winning the title. You know, you have to show up to events and give back to the sport that's given us so much. And that's yeah. what I think Jen has done a really good job with and has set a really good example of a really great Miss Bikini Olympia. And I just mm -hmm. hope that the next person continues to do that. Well, I think that, um, you know, Angelica was uh, along that same line too. And, you know, Absolutely. She's, back, she's back in it. She's still doing all that stuff now, even without the title behind her at this point. You know what I mean? 100%. So, um, so I think between the two of them, I would say they were our, our, our best representations of bikini. You know what I mean? And not talking about their bodies or anything like that. Just talking about their overall, um, them, just them as people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I've, I've said before, I actually think that Maureen has the best physique when it comes to Bikini Olympia. But I think that when we're talking about like examples to follow, I think that's Jennifer and Angelica. Those are my top yeah. two for that. Because to me, you know, it's the win. It's the win at the end of the day. It's one day. And then it's what right. you're going to do the rest of the 364 right. days. Back right. And I'm not, and I want to make it, yeah, I want to make it clear. I'm not like dissing any of the other ones either. No. They're all, they all do good jobs. Like don't, don't, don't Absolutely. come at me for being like a hater or anything like that. I just think that they are like, when I think about who's given back the most, that kind of thing, that's, that's who I think about that. Those two. Totally. So totally. You know, um, and I will also say this prior to Jennifer winning the 
the uh, Miss Bikini Olympia, um, I think everybody thought that Angelica was like the goat when it comes to that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't, and, and again, and to like, be fair, I haven't been in the sport with right. Angelica as the right. reign. I got into the right. sport at the end of 2019 and that right. was, I don't even know whose year that was, but I know Issa won in 20 or um, Janet won in 2020. So um, I have not I seen, I've not been in the so sport. So it was Issa with, in, in, in 19, I believe. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I believe it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then it was, and then it was Angelica prior to that. Okay, I think. so I haven't experienced her as our Miss Bikini Olympia, yeah, but yeah. obviously I know her as a person. She's a coach for Fit Body Fusion, and I see the way she gives back to her athletes yeah. as a coach. And I could only imagine, you know, as as you said, like with the title in hand. But she she still does that to this day. She still continues that aura of Miss Bikini Olympia and giving back. Absolutely. So yeah, just on my side of the coin, like again, going back with Jennifer, I I wasn't hugely surprised. Um, I've mentioned this before, like I actually had a conversation with Mark prior to her winning the, her first title. Um, this is actually between prejudging and finals at the Olympia when Jennifer won her title the first year. And he mentioned that their goal was to get two titles. Their goal was to get for her to get two titles. So I've known that since then, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> I will say, I thought it was interesting that she chose the timing that she did. To, to drop out, you know, like that was the part I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. I know a lot of people are out there saying, Oh, she's pregnant. She's the, we don't know that. So let's not throw that on her. And, I, and I'm sure if she is, or if she is planning it or whatever, she will come out and talk about that. I know that she's ready. Yeah, that's right. I know that they want to have a family and they want to do the business stuff and all this kind of thing. That doesn't mean they're going to do it tomorrow. You know what I mean? So like you said, um, I hope she's okay. Like my first thought in the whole process too was, well, maybe she was prepping and it's just not, she's just not responding. You know, that could be part of it too. She, you know, I don't know how many years it's been that she's actually been in the Olympia, but it's been back to back for at least six, seven years that she's been, ever, that she's been ever since I've been in it. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, even before she won the title, she was top five and she was top 10, you know, every year that she was on that stage. So she's been competing for a long time. That's, and that's no years off, none, zero, right. no years off. Right. So, you know, it could be something where she needs to, needs to vacate the throne. Like maybe her body isn't doing what it needs to do, you know, as you've talked about today, you know, you're having the, the night sweats and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it's like, there could be a million things going on. So hopefully she's okay. That's, that's the biggest thing. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, I find it hilarious with the, again, the keyboard warriors. She doesn't owe anybody an explanation. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she doesn't have to come out and say why she doesn't have to, if she wants to cool, that's fine. But again, same thing. Like you said, I'm like, I assumed something was happening because she wasn't, she wasn't vlogging like she normally does. You know, she only has her YouTube up, all that kind of stuff. And she wasn't doing all that kind of thing. So I was assuming there was something, just don't know what it is. Just don't know what it is behind the scenes. And that's, and that's, that's like you said, business. it's really, not, it's really none of our business. <laughs> that's right. Know? That's her business. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's just, it stinks, you know, the keyboard work keyboard warriors online because we truly never know at the end of the day what someone's right. going through and she might right. be just fine and she's just yeah. not and she just decided that. she didn't want to do it she just decided and just doesn't she want to has that right too you know so mm -hmm. for anybody you know it, it, it's hard it's really hard being in that in that position i'm sure where again you're miss bikini olivia you have a lot of people looking up to you and then you you know share your life but then you feel like you or your followers feel like well if you give me one piece you have to give me the whole pie and it's not like that i right. get to choose as you know, as on my social media, what I want to share with, with people, you know, right. so you, she, she and everybody else owes nobody anything on social right. media. And here, you know, this is the problem with social media is, you know, something like this. Yep. Um, well, I just saw but, this today. There was, the, you know, it's, it's it, it makes me, it makes me mad because so Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie is now pregnant, right? So Margot Robbie is one of the most attractive people in the freaking world. Like, She's freaking gorgeous. She's Barbie, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? So now people are coming out and talking about how ugly she is now she put on weight. She's fucking pregnant. Like, come on, man. Like, this is just a perfect example of you're never going to please everybody. And there are yeah. miserable people in this world and they're just going to always be miserable. So, yeah, man, you know, in fact, the truth. We've talked about this before. You got to just go after you and you got to do what you want to do with your life and fuck the rest of them. Because no matter what you do, there's going to be people that think that you suck. So, absolutely. And then there's going to be you're people that think do. you're amazing. You're damned if you're down. Exactly. Right. Then there's going to be, yeah. people, be people that think that you are amazing no matter what you do. Those are your people. 
You know, those are your people. Don't worry about the rest of them. Fuck them all. I don't give a shit. God, if, man, we, if we did uh, everything that social media or followers wanted us to do, we would be really <laughs> confused. <laughs> That's one right. day our hair would be pink and one day our hair would be would be brown yeah. and then the next day we'd wear this out. and then that one day i'm emo and then you just yeah you, you, you can't win you'll never yeah. win and that's why never. it's really important to be true to your spell to yourself especially in a sport like this where there's a lot of noise you know you go to one show and one judge wants this color and wants this mm. feedback and then the next show they tell you something completely different yep. and that's why it's really important at the end of the day to know who you are and keep showing up as your authentic self and be confident in that because somebody's always going to have have something to say about you and how you live your life and are That's you right. happy at the end of the day are you mm -hmm. happy with what you look like i was just having a conversation with a client this morning she um she's very lean right now and i'm trying to yeah. feed her into the show and she's like but i love the way i look right now and i'm like mm -hmm. okay i love that but it's not the standard you're too lean you're too hard so i'll support you and bring you into this show lean and hard but just be expectation that that's not our sport that's not our criteria that's yeah that, you know that's the feedback you know but that's how she wants to show up because she yep. wants to be her most authentic and confident self so as her coach i'm gonna support her in that i know yeah. it's not going to be the standard but i have to step back as a coach and i work for her she tells right. me how she wants to show up at the end of the day, right? So yep. if somebody tells me they want to win and do whatever we need to win, well, then I'm going to keep, you know, making sure we fill out. But she wants to show up like this. So yes. she's showing up her authentic self on Saturday. And that means that she's going to show up her most confident self on Saturday. That's right. And that's truly the win at the end of the day. Absolutely. And I say that to people all the time because, you know, obviously I do the, the consultations and stuff too, just not even just for training stuff, but the for hair, makeup, suits, all that kind of stuff. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, I can tell you till I'm blue in the face what I think is going to look best on you. But if you don't like it, that's going to show up. Absolutely. You know, I want you to be confident, right? So like when we do suits and stuff, I'll tell them like, I think you'll look good in XYZ color. I think you'll look good in blue and in red and in purple. So pick one that you like, you know? Correct. As yep. much as I might think you look your best in, in red, if you don't like red, don't wear red. Don't wear red. Exactly. Exactly. You know? I do the same thing with my girls. I'm like, hey, this is what I think will look good on you. But what do you think right. like, looks good to you? And what's your favorite color? And usually we can find a compromise, yep. except for the pinks. Except for the pinks. <laughs> there was I one know. athlete, she was all gun hell though on the pink. And then for some reason she tried on a pink suit or something. She was like, oh no, this does not look good. I was like, I told you, <laughs> told you. You, yeah. can, you can love pink. It just doesn't look good in a suit on stage. <laughs> I know. And, and with the caveat that I do think there are some girls that look great in pink. Like if yes. you've got dark skin tone and things like yes. that, pinks pop a off you fantastic. Very tiny amount. Yes. A very tiny amount of people. Yes. So yeah. it's like, you know, it's one of those things like I get that you want to wear pink. Like I have so many blondes that want to wear pink and I'm like, no. Please you're gonna don't. look you're gonna it's look barbie. washed out in barbie yeah it's yeah, barbie be, it's plastic yeah. and fake and it's just not yeah it's just not it it's just not, not it. bikini not no bikini. Uh -uh. Yeah. or here's a good example I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw myself under the bus right now so i'm i'm really lean right now and i don't like i don't like the way i look when i get stage lean i don't like it yeah you know we've talked about this before um but i'm so lean at this point that it actually hurts to sit so like, like when I drove to North Americans and drove home, my ass hurt so bad from being in the car for four hours. I was like, I feel that I am going to die. That. I'm going to die. So I'm literally sitting on it right now. Yeah. Yes. Can you show? I'm me? literally yes. sitting on it right now. Because I'm going to get it for the point. <laughs> it's on That's Amazon. It it's the comfy life. I've got the, I've got the packaging right here. Does it fold up easily to like go in a carry No, it bag? doesn't fold up. It doesn't fold okay. up, but it's squishy. Um, gosh, my, my sit bones would love that. Yes. There's the QR oh, code. It's got right like there. gel in there. <laughs> yeah. It's got gel. Yeah. 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 It's fantastic. I, I, I I'm literally, literally move sitting this. on a pillow right now. Too. <laughs> I literally move this around with me no matter where I am in the house to sit on it. Like, because yeah. But one of my clients saw this in my, in my stories on my Instagram the other day. And I was like, I'm so, I'm really able to lean that it hurts to sit. And she's like, she commented on it. She said, oh, my dream. I said, no, it's not your dream. I was like, I hate it. I was like, I get why it's exciting and all that kind of stuff. But no, it's not fun. I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the way I look. I'm doing this to, to look this way on stage. And that is it. That is Especially the only reason how much why you and I it. travel. You yeah. Know, one thing to talk about, you know, working and sitting, you can, you know, at least stand at a counter, you know, yeah. but 
we sit in cars and airplanes for long hours all the time and it stinks. So you're yeah. probably going to have to post that link because I know, right? It, so it's all of our followers. <laughs> I so I know. I'll put, I'll put it in the description box. Okay. It's, I got it on Amazon. It's like, it was like $39.99 or something like that. You know what I mean? So, but like, I'm literally like, I'm taking this with me on flights. I'm going to take it with me because um, Jennifer and I are doing the Georgia show. We're driving. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it with me and, and sit on it in the car. She'll probably buy one too, and then you guys can just switch back. And forth. She no, she's got one because she was asking go. me. She was asking me, "What one did you get?" And then when I posted that, she goes, "That's the same one I have." Perfect, perfect. <laughs> so perfect. we're gonna be we're gonna be grannies sitting on our memory foam in the car. Whatever, your ass will be very comfortable, and that's what counts. <laughs> oh my god, the things that we have to do. I don't even remember what wow. I got down that down that road. But um, going back to Olympia. <laughs> So, so yes. So, um, with Jennifer out, that really, that really makes the top five just, just completely switch up, completely switch up. Um, I'm going to do predictions and stuff like that on my, on my live feed, probably, probably next week, maybe, maybe the week after. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm the one thing that I'm interested to see is because obviously for a lot of people, they think, okay, Maureen can win her title back. Um, but I think the one that everybody's waiting to win is going to be Laura Lee. You know what I mean? Cause she hasn't won yet. And my thought process is like, okay, yeah, great. So let's say she comes into the Olympia and she nails it and she wins it. Is it going to mean the same because she didn't beat Jennifer? You know what I mean? Cause they almost have like this, like, it's not, it's not a rivalry, but it is because they've always been together on stage, you know, always right. back and forth and back and forth. And it's almost like it takes the, takes that wind out of your sails when you can't beat your rival. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, and I'm, I'm curious to see how she, how Laura Lee feels about that too. You know, she actually wins the title. Is it something where she's going to be like, okay, Jennifer, come back so we can have the face off. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. That'd be yeah. interesting to me. It would be. And then that's a, that's a very interesting thought process. I've never thought about it that way. You know, what I, yeah. you know, it, 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 she's still beating out what there's going to be at least 56 of us up there so you know 56 yeah. of the best bikini athletes in the world up on that stage you know whatever that top five is it's going to be the best of the best you know oh, so, yeah 100 yeah 100%. It's, it's, I, was, I think back to like the... it, it shakes it up and it makes it so interesting you know yeah. and we say this every year at the olympia in some sort of way because of some sort of situation is very interesting every year but this yeah. one especially when the you know the rain the reigning winner of last year is not involved so yeah. um I don't and know. then what that's what that's going to do is got, that's going to set up like all sorts of new theories and, and hype for next year too, based on who wins and who ends up gets in, who ends up even getting into the top ten and top five this year. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. And you know what I'm going to talk about tonight on my live feed too is we've got the battle of the bodies coming up this weekend. And last year, if you remember, Romina came in and she won the last qualifying show, walked into the Olympia, ended up in top ten. Well, this year she's doing the same thing. She's going into that show again, but Ari's in that show this year so yeah. she's got to be Ari in order to get qualified Ari's already qualified so so I, I'm th this weekend's going to be interesting too I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very to interesting you know because at uh, Battle of Bodies we have Ari and Romina so for the same mm -hmm. thing Romina's trying to get her qualification already had her quali Ari already has her qualification however this is going to be her first show out with uh James Atlas mm -hmm. yep. um and he's completely changed her physique you know it's not a hundred percent of where she was, but damn, she's pretty close. Like she looks yeah. really, really good. And I think Ari has the potential to win an Olympia one day, you know, so Agreed. she's got that genetic factor. So that will be very interesting. And then Romina is just very consistent. She always brings a good look, a consistent look. So that will be a good battle. Um, and then in Texas, you have all of the athletes there, probably because they heard Romina and Ari were going to be in battle. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, and so I think there's in the area of 32 to 36 athletes and none of them no. are qualified, but there's a lot of previous Olympians in that yeah. trying to get that final qualification. So it's going to be an interesting weekend. It's going to be a very, very, very fun weekend. I'll be yeah. at Battle of the Bodies. Well, I was going to say that. Olympia. So you're going, I thought you said that you were staying home until Sasquatch. No, I'm, I, this is my last work trip. I have four true novice athletes in Battle okay. of the Bodies this weekend okay. and one one in uh, another state. So, yeah, with that many athletes, I just felt like I needed to be there. Honestly, in the beginning of the week, when I was having the night sweats and stuff, there was no way I was getting on that plane with how I was feeling. Um, with not having the night sweats over the last couple of nights, I feel a lot better and more confident traveling. Like, I was, I was envisioning myself on a plane 
you know, because I take such late flights to the East Coast, having this sweat episode, there was yeah. no way like I would have survived that. So um, I'm going, I'm definitely going, definitely going to support my athletes. And uh, then I'll be there in person as well to, mm-hmm. to see the pro show. So yeah, I'll be I'll be texting you. So what do you see? Because <laughs> I do that at every show. Yes. <laughs> Is it what I'm seeing on the pictures and in the videos? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on your eyes and ears. <laughs> no, right? Oh my god. Because yeah, I'm home this week. I'm I'm home until until Daytona. So okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm actually excited about that show. I didn't realize it's like a whole two day expo thing and everything. It's like a big deal. I'm like, yeah. and it's on the beach. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> I'm like, I get this would be cool. I haven't been there myself. Yeah. Um, N- Nade won that yes, one last she year. And she so. said it's a great show. Like she I'm had excited. so much fun. And just like you said, it's like a little mini Olympia. They have like a little yeah. expo, but it's like just small enough that it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I think you're gonna have a great time. I think yeah. that's gonna be a really cool thing. Like the show. hard rock is the the hard rock is the uh, host hotel. So I'm like, oh yeah. that's fun. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Super cool. And I'm Daytona, gonna, like Daytona Beach, like yeah. a hot spot, you know. I'm flying into Orlando versus Daytona. Okay. Because um it's only an hour away. But yeah, Sanford's probably easier to, to yeah, get it's, good flights and stuff. There's yeah, the flights into Daytona were were horrible. And they were like two hundred dollars yeah. more than going into into Orlando. So I was like, Well, I'll just go to Orlando, get a rental because a rental car because um the venue and the hard rock are like 10 minutes away from each other too. So I was like, I'll just get, yeah, I'll just get a rental car. It's like 50 bucks for the freaking four days or whatever it is. I'm there, you know? And it's like, like that's way easier. And then, and then I get direct flights. What was, I found actually a pretty decent um, priced flight going into uh, Daytona, but they were all connecting. And I was like, no, Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to do direct. So uh, going into and out of Orlando were all direct flights. I'm like, this is way better. So, um, so yeah, so I'm actually kind of, it's been a while since I've been to a show and got a rental car. So I was like, a little while since I've done that, but now I'm like, oh no, that'll be fun because I can go get the groceries. That normally I do Instacart. I don't need to do that when I gotta cut my own car and stuff like that. So it's a convenience cool. in some aspects, and it's an inconvenience in others. Like on show day, like it's great to be a passenger princess, right? It's like, honey, can you pull the car around? Versus like, yeah. oh, I have to go pull the, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's great for things like that. Like, oh, I need yeah. a coffee run, or oh, I need to go to the grocery store, you know. But and then you have total control over your travel too. So it's like one yeah. of those. And I was like, and that yeah. was the thing. It's like, if I need to take an Uber from like the hard rock to the, to the totally. for the show day part of it, I can do that, you know, totally. but everything else I yeah. got a car. And like I said, the car's $2 a day <laughs> plus, like, plus taxes and fees and all that kind of shit too. But that's you know ridiculous. what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, that's so stupid. good. <laughs> <laughs> like, You'll spend stupid. that in Ubers. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that's what I did. I looked at it. I was like, okay, if I take an Uber, and that was why I was going back and forth also between just flying into Daytona versus um, Orlando, because like an Uber from Orlando to Daytona would have been like a hundred something dollars, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, or if I went into Daytona, it still would have been like fifty, sixty dollars to take an Uber. So I was like, well, this is. I mean, even that doesn't help. You know what I mean? Right. Because from right. that, to the, I, I looked all this stuff up, guys. I, I, I'm a big planner, a big time planner. So I looked up times of day for getting Ubers, all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So I was like, you know, even if I went into Daytona, I'm like, it's a 20 to 30 minute drive. So I'm only doubling my drive going to Orlando. I was like, it's cheaper to go into Orlando by a lot. The, the flights are direct and they're not, you know, stopping over in Atlanta and all this kind of stuff. So I don't lose luggage or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, Screw all the things it. you have to think about. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, I would 100% rather take a direct flight than try to do connection flights anytime possible. Yes. Um, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, these are things, and these are things you learn from traveling over the years, you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm exactly. like, and the flight times are better. Like I can fly, I'm flying in early on Thursday morning and then I'm flying out late on Sunday night because I want to go to the beach and like hang out and stuff like that. Yeah. And, like enjoy my day while I'm there. Train because I'll be right back in a peak week again. <laughs> So it's like, sleep. you know, yeah, exactly. Sleep in, get all my training in, whatever kind of adjustments we need to make after the show, all those kinds of things and take my time and all of that. So I can do client check-in stuff, all that kind of stuff right from the beach, you know, all of that. So yeah, yeah I'm excited about it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's, good. it's getting um, close. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I don't, like, again, I go back to this past week, I was really tired. But now I'm okay. Like I'm weak when I go to train, but I'm not like exhausted. I'm weaker. I can't push as, as much as I was. I was. Like I'm going higher in reps and lower in weight, that kind of thing, just to keep my intensity up. 
Um, but I mean, I'm, you know, that's normal. Again, that's normal going into the last few weeks. So I really don't feel terrible about it, you know? Yeah. I mean, fatigue's to be expected, you know, especially yeah. like we just said, like those last few pounds, like that's where you're at right now. Like just that grind of that last couple, yeah. you know, okay, pounds like or one, or whatever. Two more, one or two more off these hamstrings right now. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And I think people get confused because they're like, the closer you are, they feel like you should be feeling better. It's like the closer you are, like that last little bit, that's when you're feeling the worst and you know and it's like you're so depleted but you just have to keep pushing so you got it you got it yeah. i was just there last week it was an awful 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 week but you just got to keep pushing and then i just got my cardio reduced today i'm so excited <laughs> so <laughs> that one just came in notification just came in no more yeah. cardio i don't know no, I, it's I'm, 30 I'm, minutes 30 yeah. minutes is going to feel like a brace. Yeah. <laughs> my, my check-in day is tomorrow so we'll see what we what we do uh, changing tomorrow we'll see if I, if I still have my period tomorrow who knows yeah. i'm like because my my weight my weight is kind of stuck this week and i was like why is it like i'm pushing hard you know I'm like why is it going anywhere <laughs> that's why <laughs> at least i didn't balloon up i didn't gain weight at all i went up like two ounces so that means like, you're gonna drop then as yeah. soon as it clear yeah, whatever yeah. this is yeah whatever this is like my little like four hour bleed <laughs> you know like whatever that is i don't know um <laughs> But anyway, so let's do like one or two questions before we finish out. Do you have time? Yeah. I mean, yeah. One, one or two. One or two. One or two. I'm just okay. seeing my uh, trainer. Okay. Your yeah. trainer eyes going. Okay. Um, I got one. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. I mean, I'm okay. nervous, but let's do it. No, no. It's just funny. It's okay. So what would be your elevator pitch to aliens for why they should abduct you? <laughs> <laughs> so random i know huh <laughs> they should abduct me yeah, well, well am i trying to get out of work or am i trying to get off i know right depends on right. the day right yeah yeah yeah. i would say today you can abduct me so that i can go eat something <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> please take me so i don't have to do my 30 minutes of cardio and i can eat a cheese <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh gosh. So how about you? Um, I would say abduct me because um I don't know. I've had a lot of life experiences, so you could learn a lot from me. I've been I've been I've been around the block, as you as you know. Oh, so you're gonna try to educate me. Yeah, alien. I'll educate them. I'll give them <laughs> I'll give them all the ins and outs. I'll That's get a different perspective. <laughs> Maybe they, they take you and you can tell them, educate them on why they shouldn't do anything to planet Earth. Yeah. 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 That's a good, I like that. I like that. I'm like, yeah. I'll tell you guys exactly why humans are so fucked up and you don't want any part of us. <laughs> Look at Sean looking out for the world and I'm looking out for my belly. <laughs> <laughs> like You do not want to invade Earth. We are all messed up really really messed up we're not going to bring any value at all to you especially this is... that jordan brandon <laughs> <laughs> no value at all all she wants is to get is cheesecake that's all she wants <laughs> no value leave her be <laughs> ah, yeah. that was a funny one I'm that was random saving... no, i know right i'm saving the earth i'm saving the earth <laughs> I don't have any questions. Where are you getting these questions from? You're going to pull one more. No, I literally went on to Google and I said, funny podcast questions. That's what I did. And then I found that one. That was a good one. Funny podcast questions. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if one comes up. 65 okay. funny icebreaker questions. There you okay. go. Hold on. Let's do this. Ready? Did, 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 did. Uh... If you were sent back in time to a thousand years ago, how would you prove that you were from the future? Well, we already know that I don't know how to tell time because I wanted to go back to the Mayflower. <laughs> I would prove you that would I'm... say you would say I do not know. I do not know. Just... Yes, I would. Right. I, I would never prove... met him. I would prove him from the future and show them my breast implants. <laughs> I have plastic parts. I am from the future. That's they didn't have they didn't have those a thousand years ago. No, they sure didn't. I would <laughs> I would show I would show them my sneakers because I'm go. thinking like Jesus sandal era. Yeah, like look at these cool yeah. sneakers. Like yeah. you can work in them. They have hard bottoms. They don't fall off. They don't yeah. break. They would be like, 
and then they'd be looking at our plastic too and be yep. like, oh, what is that? I was, These I are flotation said, devices. Right? <laughs> I almost said like hair extensions, but back then I'm sure that they did stuff like that too. Like they probably braided hair uh, in and stuff like that. You know, yeah, so like ripped that. their hair. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I could totally yeah. see that for sure. Yeah, so I'm sure they yeah. did all that kind of stuff. So you have to show them something that's a, that's a technology advancement. Correct. Plastic, plastic parts. That was a good one. Parts. Yeah, that was a good there one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's find like one or two more and then we'll be done. Um, uh, oh, I have a good one. What's something okay. that's not illegal, but should, but feels illegal? Something that's not illegal, but feels illegal. It's like kind of, I mean, it's actually I, kind of a tough one. I'm like, literally Any, all I can think of is pot. That's all I can think of. See, and I think of like computers, you know what I mean? Uh, like it makes things uh, too easy, yeah. you know, like you don't work yeah, for yeah. anything like, yeah. you know, like AI. Google and you don't AI. Use, like, AI, exactly. Yeah. Chat GPT. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah. You can make yourself sound like you're super smart when you're not. <laughs> but have you ever like watched people that like talk on reels with when they've used like chat chat GPT and you can totally tell that that's not them talking. Like you're trying to be like, I saw this one guy that I went to college with and to be fair, he was very like, he was very like pretentious and stuff in college too. So to be fair, that's kind of his personality, but I'm, I'm watching his, his reel and I'm like, you totally put that into chat GPT. I'm like, there's no way that you're trying to be that's all inspirational you. and stuff like that. Like, that's not, that's not you. That's not you talking. But that's the thing is like, some people don't know these influencers personally, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. they're yeah. seeing this personality that's been created and not like a true personality, but you were able to read right through it because you know the yeah. person, I know. <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you're, part. I'm like, you're pretentious and annoying. I'm like, you're trying to be inspirational. You're not inspirational. And you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the scary part about. Yeah influenced by people you really don't know in real life or yeah. have been vetted, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's actually them talking. They're just reading a script, right. you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I just had one that I pulled up. I have a good story for this one too. Cause I just pulled it up, but what did I do with it? Oh, um, what's the most embarrassing fashion emergency you've ever had? <laughs> That's an embarrassing story is the only one I can think of. I know I've had a nip out at some point too. That's what mine is. Yeah, I know I've done that on accident. The only thing I can think of is that one time I had an accident and it was with Drew. <laughs> well, I was sleeping at Drew's house. Okay, so this was in college. Literally my our apartments were across the street from each other from a light. So like we would just have to go across the light and here's my apartment and here's his apartment. Okay. So I was sleeping at his apartment one night and back then I had like poop fear, like didn't go to the bathroom in front of anybody. If I was around people, like there was no way it was happening. So somehow I was probably staying at his house for a couple of nights and I hadn't gone to the bathroom and I woke up in the middle of the night and I had to go so bad, would not go in his apartment. So I got in my car to drive back to my apartment at like two in the morning and I'm sitting at the light to go across and it's two in the morning, there's no one there. And the light would not change, and oh, I had no. an accident. Oh no! Yeah, and then no. I stayed in my apartment, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and Drew woke yeah. up, and he's like, "Where are you? <laughs> like, where are? Because we home. woke up so early for class. It was like five, yeah. five in the morning. So he's like, "Where are you? Like, there's no way you're at school already." Da da da. And um, yeah, that I had to tell him what happened, and I was so <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> God, hey, you know, shit happens, literally. So yeah. you and these puns lately, like. <laughs> I know. I don't have prep brain at all. I got them right no. here. Pop it. Yeah, Pop exactly. it. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, you need to lower her. I know, feet. right? Too smart, but so. It's too good. Um, <laughs> well, mine is, mine is nip out. So when I was, um, when I was a senior in high school, I had the lead in my high school musical. And, uh, the biggest number of the whole show, it, it was, uh, it's the show called Anything Goes. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but it's mm -hmm. like, like flapper style, like 1920s kind of look, right? So okay. um, it takes place on a cruise ship. So the big, huge, like the huge number of the show where the entire cast is on stage, right? So I'm the, the lead singer for this, for this, right? 
It's called Blow Gabriel Blow. <laughs> of, all, of all things, that's the name of the song. The number. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just snorted. Um, anyway, so I'm in the middle of like the everybody's like wearing like sailor costumes and things like that. So I have on a slinky dress that like you'd seen in nightclub of a jazz singer like, singing kind of thing, right? So really beautiful, but it's really tight, um, form fitting. And as I start my song, I felt the strap on my dress break. And I had like one of those sheer, like sexy robe things over it, you know, because yeah. it's like very sexy, like jazzy type thing. I'm like, oh shit. I'm in the middle of this song. I can't go off stage because my dress strap just broke. So as I'm, as I'm singing, I feel the other one go and I feel the dress start to just come down as I'm singing in the middle of the the show. And all that's covering me on top is this sheer robe. That's all that's covering me on the top. And the end of the song is these two guys dressed as sailors. I get on their shoulders and I'm up in the air like this with the spotlight on me, like that. That's how the whole song ends. And oh my god, covering, literally the worst. All that's covering me is that sheer robe, right? Wow. I run off stage and I just kept my composure the whole time. I run off stage, my, my director of the show is back there. She's like, Are you okay? Because nah, 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 nah. she saw it happen in the, in the in the audience, everything. I'm like, I'm fine. She's like, You just kept your character, and I don't think anybody even noticed. She's like, she noticed because she directs the play, you know what I mean? My parents were in the audience, they didn't even notice. I was like, <sighs> <laughs> I feel like you would have felt like the air get sucked out of the room. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, I know. You, got it. you don't know if it, people well, notice. Gosh, thank God, because you're in high school too at this point. Like, that's a detriment to your whole aura of yourself in high school. I was 16 years old, you know, like, oops. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking the entire time you're saying that story. Like, do you run off stage at that point? Right. Like, do you just try well, to hold it? That's what was going through my head. Yeah, yeah, that's what was going through my head. I was like, "What?" Do, I'm like, "I'm just going to keep going and pretend nothing's happening." Because I was, I knew I had that robe over top of me, so I was just praying that that was enough coverage. You know what I mean? Because it was literally the robe. down. It was down here, and wow. all that was covering me was that robe. So I don't think anybody really noticed. <laughs> hope and well, back then no yeah, one back said then, anything yeah back then it wasn't like people didn't have cell phones out you know they, right. that wasn't it you know there was a, there was one person recording it and it was like a like those old vcr camcorder type things you know <laughs> so it wasn't like it didn't people didn't people didn't know nobody pe- right. nobody on stage with me knew it happened nobody happened nobody knew the only person that noticed it was my dress at least director. that i know of was my director because she was backstage waiting for me when i got off wow, I got that's off a complete wow uh, wardrobe malfunction <laughs> yeah and it literally happened right as i started the song i felt that strap that strap break and i was like shit like, fuck what do i do and the thing is too even if you run off stage there's nothing they can do like they can't pull that dress up on you you know what i mean like it's not gonna stay you have no strap <laughs> you know, like so, you just act as if you just keep going and pretend it's not happening and hope that nobody notices, and that's what happens. It's a part of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that but was a good one. Yeah, but literally, the end of the show was just me in the spot like this on in, on two, the shoulders of the two tallest guys in the class <laughs> with the spotlight. <laughs> Unreal. Sixteen-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, you take your straps before you go on stage. That's what right. we're saying. Yeah. You know, that's, and that's something I tell, actually, to, to relate this to competing, if you're at all worried about your suit, just glue it to you. Yeah, you know? literally. Yeah. Like I've seen, I've seen connectors break, but you wouldn't know it because the girl had the suit glued to her skin. Yeah. So just glue it to you. And then even if something breaks or snaps, you're, you're fine. Nothing's going anywhere. Yeah. So just yeah, glue that glue it. really works, really keeps you in. Yeah. Sure does. Sure does. So yep. we, we related that to competing. So there you go. You got a little tip. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's all how we do. We, all, we, always, we always can wrap it back around somehow. That's it. That's it. All right. That's, that's a good way to one. end it. I got yeah. 300 uh, messages, trainer messages, trainer messages because, because it wouldn't let them upload their photos Absolutely. this morning. So they're all yeah. freaking out. So we got to. Yeah. Yeah. It's a technical error. It's a technical error. Technical so, error. Technical yeah. Error. I think it's already <laughs> fixed. Thank God. But I got to go do damage control now. <laughs> gotta love it. You gotta love it. Cause now they gotta go, they, now they gotta all go in and re-upload. Mm-hmm. And I have to go tell them all that. So respond to their check-in, make sure they go back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just send one big bombarding for me. 
Just yeah. send one big group message. It'll That's good. good. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so guys, thank you so much. This was fun. We, <laughs> I like I like when we go on these little tangents. They're a lot of fun. Um, yes. So this is episode 55 of Behind the Bikini. Um, we will be back again next week. And uh, yeah, comment below if you have any crazy questions, but also comment below your thoughts as far as, you know, going into the Olympia, what you're thinking with what's going to happen and how the bikini lineup is going to shake up and all that kind of fun stuff too, because we got Olympia hype coming up for the next few weeks. So we're going to ride that wave too. Um, and with that, have a great travel day, travel day out to Florida. Um, Thank you. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. Have a great day, you guys. We love you all. Thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe as always. And for Behind the Bikini, we are out. Bye.